Welcome to the 18th lecture in general topology. The topics that we will explore in this lecture include continuous functions and properties of the product topology on a finite product set. Okay, so we'll start with some of the exercises from the previous lecture, and I'm going to roll the first exercise into a more inclusive corollary. So let the function f from x into y be an injection and let the collection of sets g sub i for i in some indexing set i be an indexed family of subsets of the domain x, then the direct image of the intersection of those subsets is equal to the intersection of the direct images of those sets. So proof. We have already established that the direct image of an intersection of subsets of the domain X is a subset of the intersection of the direct images of those sets. So now let Y be a point in the intersection of the direct images of the sets G sub I then the point Y, which is F of X, is in the direct image of the set G sub I for every index I. And so the point X is in the inverse image of the direct image of the set G sub I for every index I. Now since the function f is injective, the inverse image of the direct image of the set g sub i is equal to the set g sub i for every index i. And so the point x is in the set g sub i for every index i. And hence, the point x is in the intersection of the sets g sub i. And so f of x, which is the point y, is in the direct image of the intersection of the sets g sub i. And thus, the intersection of the direct images of the sets g sub i is a subset of the direct image of the intersection of those sets. And therefore, the direct image of the intersection of subsets of the domain is equal to the intersection of the direct images of those sets if the function f is injective. Okay, so now I will roll the second exercise into a much more inclusive theorem. So let X and Y be topological spaces. And let F be a function from the space X into the space Y. 
then the following are equivalent. If we say that the function f is continuous, then this is the same as the condition that for every point x in the domain space x and for every open neighborhood, v of the point f of x in the space y, there exists an open neighborhood u of x in the space x such that the set u is a subset of the inverse image of the set v and this is the same as the condition that for every point x in the space x and for every open neighborhood v of the point f of x in the space y there exists an open neighborhood u of the point x in the space x such that the direct image of the set u is a subset of the set v. And this is the same as the condition that for every subset A of the domain space X, the direct image of the closure of A in X is a subset of the closure of the direct image of A in Y. And this in turn is equivalent to the condition that for every closed set C in the space Y, the inverse image of that set is closed in the space X. And this is equivalent to the condition that for every open set v in the space y, the inverse image of that set is open in the space x. And finally this in turn is equivalent to the condition that for every subset b of the range space y or the codomain space y, the inverse image of the interior of B in Y is a subset of the interior of the inverse image of the set B in X. So proof. First notice that statement two is the definition of a continuous function. So the first statement is true if and only if the second statement is true. And we have already demonstrated that the statement 1 is true if and only if, statement 5 is true, and statement 1 is true if and only if, statement 6 is true. So we will show that statement 2 implies statement 3, which in turn implies statement 4, which in turn imply statement 5 and that statement 6 is true if and only if 
statement 7 is true. So suppose that statement 2 is true, then since the set U is a subset of the inverse image of the set V, we have that the direct image of the set U is a subset of the direct image of the indirect image of the set V, which in turn is a subset of the set V. And hence statement 2 implies statement 3. So now suppose that statement 3 is true and let the point X be in the closure of A in the space X where A is a subset of the domain space X then f of x is in the direct image of the closure of a and x. And so for every open neighborhood, v of f of x in the space y there exists an open neighborhood U of the point X in the space X such that the direct image of U is a subset of the set V Now as the point X is in the closure of the set A in X, the intersection of the set U, the open neighborhood of the point X with the set A is not empty. And so the direct image of the intersection of U and A, which is a subset of the direct image of U intersected with the direct image of A is not empty. Now since the direct image of U is a subset of the set V, we have that the intersection of the direct image of U with the, the direct image of A is a subset of the intersection of the set V with the direct image of A, and hence the intersection of the set V with the direct image of A is not empty. That is, for every open neighborhood V of the point F of X in the set Y, the intersection of V with the direct image of A is not empty. And so the point F of X is in the closure of the direct image of A and Y. And thus the direct image of the closure of A and X is a subset of the closure of the direct image of A and Y. And hence, the third statement implies the fourth. So now suppose The statement 4 is true. Let B be closed in the space Y and let the set A be the inverse image of the set B. Then the direct image of the set A is equal to the direct image of the inverse image of the set B, which is a subset of the set B. And so the closure of the direct image of A is a subset of the closure of the set B in Y. And since 
the set B is closed, it is equal to its closure. Now let X be a point in the closure of A and X. Then F of X is in the direct image of the closure of A and X, which is a subset of the closure of F of A and Y, which in turn is a subset of the set B. And so the point X is in the inverse image of the set B, which is the set A. That is the closure of A and X is contained in the set A. And so the set A is closed in the space X. And so for every closed set B in the space Y, the inverse image of that set is closed in the space X. And hence the fourth statement implies the fifth. So now suppose that the sixth statement is true. And let B be a subset of the range space Y. Then, since the interior of B and Y is a subset of the set B, we have that the inverse image of the interior of B and Y is a subset of the inverse image of the set B. Now since the interior of B and Y is open in the space Y, the inverse image of the interior of B and Y is open in the space X. That is, the inverse image of the interior of B and Y is an open set in X that is contained in the inverse image of the set B. And since the largest open set that can be contained in the uh, inverse image of the set B is the interior of that set in the space X, we have that the inverse image of the interior of B and Y is a subset of the interior of the inverse image of B and X. So conversely, suppose that statement seven is true and let the set B be open in the space Y, then the interior of B in Y is equal to B. And so the inverse image of the interior of B in Y is equal to the inverse image of the set B, which is a subset of the interior of the inverse image of B in X. So the set which is the inverse image of the set B is a subset of its interior in X. And hence the inverse image of B is open in the space X. And so for every open set B in the space Y, the inverse image of that set is open in the space X. And thus statement Six is true if and only if statement seven is true.